Hello everybody, welcome back to 51 Yarns. This is week 16, which is Thick and Thin Singles. Uh, my name is Bex from the Tiny Fibre Studio podcast and I am a little bit behind with these videos at the moment for a reason that I think is a really good reason and I will explain more at the end of this episode. So if you have any interest in sustainable transport, cycling, um, folding bikes, specifically Bromptons, and people looking utterly ridiculous while racing bikes around Buckingham Palace, then stay tuned at the end of the episode. <laughs> so the yarn that I spun for week 16 was this one. You guys will know by now that I'm not somebody who tends to spin a lot of art yarn or textured yarn. Um, it's just not something that I tend to use and so I tend not to spin it. But half the point of this 51 yarns thing is to expose me to some of those things that I don't normally do. So this was a really useful exercise actually and I, I did find myself kind of oddly enjoying it. But again, I, I just can't think of a time when I would use it. Some people really like their hand spun to look like hand spun and I tend not to. I tend to like mine to look as neat and orderly as possible even though you know the point of hand spun is that it's got those kind of quirks in it. Um, but this was the yarn that I spun and I think I did reasonably well. I have very definite thick sections and very definite thin sections and I think the spacing was pretty consistent. So that was the sample that I spun. My resources this time round were JC Boggs Faulkner's spin art video on Interweave. I do have the book as well. Um, to be honest, I tend to learn better from videos than I do from books, but it's useful if you can have a dual resource and I would definitely say that spin art is a good dual resource if you have the book and the video. I will say that I did a little sample before I did that one and it was fairly abysmal, <laughs> which was why I went back and watched the spin art video. Um, it was over twisted. The thin sections were really, really over twisted and the thick sections kind of weren't thick enough through most of it. Um, so that was why I went back and rewatched the video and I was definitely a lot more happy with my second sample. It should probably also be noted at this point that uh, because I was away for a few days, um, the cats are kind of clingy at the moment. <laughs> like, will not leave me alone just in case I go away again. So uh, they may make more of an appearance than usual. Normally, they've kind of got to the point where they realise that, okay, I'm, you know, she's doing this whole talking to a camera thing and they just go and flake out in my bedroom. But uh, you might see them a little bit more now. So in terms of the difference between those two sample skeins, the first thing that really helped was splitting the fibre, which is a tip that JC talks about in that video. And basically you just grab a, a piece of fibre. The fibre has to be quite a short staple length, like merino or cormo or something like that, because um, otherwise you're gonna find it difficult to have a structurally sound yarn when it's thick and thin. So the first thing that she has you do is to split the fibre so that you have about a thumb's width of fibre. What you don't do at this point is to attenuate it in any way. So there's no sort of pulling it, there's no um, making it longer. You're just splitting it down lengthways. I've got the wheel set up at the moment on quite a slow whirl or pulley and with not too much tension. 
and I did have to make sure to treadle really slowly as well. So I'm just going to join that on. And I'm going to do a sh little section where it's just thin for a little while so that if I'm casting something on like a, a sample swatch um, I don't want to have any thick sections in that cast on so I'm just going to do a little bit of just thin singles and then we're going to start putting some thicker sections in so for the thicker sections you basically just grab a little bit behind where the twist is going in so if my twist is ending here normally I would start pinching just that little bit further up like here I'm going to start pinching a bit further down here and I'm going to be twisting it until my staple actually breaks or starts to break apart further down let the twist in and I'm choosing to do three drafts quite short drafts in between so all of my thin sections are three short drafts There is a piece in that video where she talks about how to make the thick sections look nice and round and plump instead of just looking kind of folded. Um, that's something that I feel like I need to practice a little bit more. I don't think it's perfect yet, but I'm not going to talk about that because I don't, I don't want to sort of refer to some of these videos and then end up telling you all of the information that's in them because I want the original creators to uh, get the credit. So I try not to reveal absolutely everything about the sources but at the same time I do want to show you how I ended up spinning that yarn. One of the things I had to watch out for and that I've just forgotten about was um, trying to make sure that when I join on a new piece of fibre that I'm joining that on in a thin section not a thick section. And it feels really weird when you're doing this at first because your hands are so used to doing the normal thing of trying to make the yarn nice and consistent and you normally never want that staple to, to break so you never want it to get that sort of thin section um, like this where it's, where it's kind of becoming really really thin there you never normally want that to happen um, but you do when you're spinning thick and thin and that feels really weird initially but I did find you know if I just practiced it and kind of got into a rhythm it actually came fairly easily Hello Saf, you come to say hello or have you come to just eat my yarn? Stop. Yeah, I know you like the hedgy, I know you like the hedgy threader but you're not having it. Stop.
No, don't eat it. Safi, naughty girl, naughty girl, you either sit nicely or you don't. I'm trying to be helpful. And incidentally, if you're wondering, you know, where is the mini spinner at the moment? Um, I'm not deliberately not using the mini spinner. It's just that the mini spinner kind of has a longer term project on it right now. So it's not that you couldn't do this on a mini spinner. You definitely could. You'd want it going quite slowly, but you could do it. You can do pretty much anything on a mini spinner that you can do, do on a regular wheel, but like I say, right now it has a long term project on it, and so I don't want to have to disturb that every time I come to film one of these episodes. So there you go, that was kind of short but sweet, but uh, that was how I did with week 16. As I say, actually quite happy with it once I had um, figured out those couple of tips. So don't be afraid to make it really thick and really thin and don't be afraid to let the staple kind of start to break on you. Um, just those two tips alone were completely worth it for me. As I said, there are lots of other tips in that video which I found really helpful, but I don't want to kind of give you all the content of a paid video in a free YouTube video. Um, hopefully you should be able to see plenty from just watching me spin but I'm just really conscious that people have worked very hard and produced a video that is totally worth buying and watching as a fantastic resource but that was how I did with week 16. Now I did promise that I would explain why I am so behind on my 51 yarns videos so if you have no interest whatsoever in cycling, sustainable transport, frankly, if you're not interested in sustainable transport, you should be, um, and people looking really daft while cycling around Buckingham Palace on folding bicycles, then you can stop watching here and I will see you next week, which is Silk, it's week 17, Silk. If you are going to stop watching here, then thank you very, very much for watching. I hope you found this useful and I will see you again next week for the Silk episode. Um, for those of you who are sticking around, get comfy because I will explain all.